Hey, it's Apex Specialty Vehicles, and we're here today with Patrick Hale. He's the marketing director at Texas Ice Cream. We're going to ask him a few questions about his business and how he got started in food trucks. Patrick, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Good. First, can you tell us how you came up with your name, Texas Ice Cream? We uh, were a, a franchisee, and we eventually uh, wanted to uh, make our own name, so we just did a quick Google search, what's available? And Texas Ice Cream was available, and we just went with Texas Ice Cream uh, with the uh, notion of keeping it simple stupid, right? Mm -hmm. you, want, you want people to know where you are and what you do, and we figured you know, that's Texas Ice Cream. You can't get much more you know, simpler than that. Nice, so, nice. Yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about your business model and how you got started? Yeah, Joe, uh, Joe McSweeney, the owner, um, he, got, he was doing his uh, MBA at, at SMU, which is um, a school down in Dallas. And uh, the soft serve ice cream business is really big uh, on the East Coast. And um, he kind of wanted to introduce it to the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth uh, area, uh, which we did. And um, kind of grew from, from one truck, realizing that wasn't going to be nearly enough. Uh, because if you buy, you get you get one truck. You, as I say, you buy yourself a job, and that's not what we wanted. We wanted to do this to make money. To be very fair, um, but also, you know, there was no ice cream. Uh, kids in the Dallas Fort Worth area did not have any type of uh, good ice cream truck available. I mean, it's all those dingy old mm -hmm. vans mm -hmm. with drivers that you don't know. <laughs> you know what? You know, chain smoking, talking on their phones, and everything. And our our business model was. And what people say to us every single day is clean trucks, nice drivers, and great ice cream. And that's it, you know? Um, all of our drivers are background checked. Uh, surprisingly, no one requires us to do that. Uh, we just do it on our, on our own. Um, uh, that's something that we kind of, uh, what you'll face, you know, when you start any type of you know, food truck or ice cream truck is the regulation side of things is, how do I get, a, how do I get permitting? Who do I have to permit with? If you're moving around, then you have to get multiple permits. Well, why is that? And we kind of always equate it to, you know, if I have a, um, a Dallas County license, you know, driver's license, do I need to get a Tarrant County driver's license? It doesn't really make sense. So that's, that's something where that was a huge roadblock, you know, because um, once you start adding up the fees and costs for all these different permits, you're going, oh, my gosh, like this is a, it's actually uh, – completely changes things you might have to raise your prices you might have to do a whole a whole lot of other stuff not to mention the time and and money it takes to get those uh different licenses so how did you guys really navigate through that uh trial and error <laughs> trial and error and and a lot of it's talking um you know it's it's different for every part of the country um but a lot of it's talking to the municipalities and you, you, if you can get an ear of somebody in, in the government, uh, like a local government, um, uh, that kind of sees your side of things, you know, it's, it's, uh, they can help you. And they can really, they can, you can get, we've gotten laws changed. We've, we were actually, in the, in the city of Colleyville, we were brought in as an uh, outside council to help make their um, uh, food truck ordinance because they didn't have one on the books. So we were actually uh, helpful in that regard. We just said, really, you want, you want drivers or you want trucks that are insured and you want drivers that are background checked. And so I think to my knowledge, uh, maybe one or two other places, but Colleyville, yeah, is the only one that allows or requires background checked ice cream truck drivers, which is, like I said, completely you know, crazy to think about. Um, most places just want their, um, uh, their kind of permit fee and that's it. But what does that do? So mm -hmm. uh, if you can kind of, you can use that argument to talk to somebody in city government whose job it is to protect their people and they're going, oh my gosh, I didn't, never even thought of it that way. And that's something that can help both your business and you know, help, help grow your business and help give us all a better name. You know, that's, that's the end of the day. You know, um, coming into it, especially as an ice cream truck you know, company and ice cream truck man, you have that initial stigma of, like mm -hmm. I said, that, that ratty, dingy you know, ice cream truck with a you know, chain smoking driver on their cell phone. And that's just, we're the complete opposite of that. How many trucks and drivers do you guys currently have? Four, four. Okay. Yeah, and so we're looking to build two more. Uh, and then so, and then two more the year following and two more the year following. So um, we're kind of, that's, that's our goal. And two a year, um, I don't want to say for, for perpetuity, but 
yeah, that's our goal is to keep on getting bigger and bigger. And the, the problem too is, you know, you can, you can always, um, so why not more, why not less? You don't want to build too quickly. I mean, you like the, a major issue that people come across, especially in food trucks and getting started is, is cash flow problems. Like what, what kills small businesses, you know, it's cash flow. And if you build too quickly, if we build four trucks, and then heaven forbid, you know, one truck goes down because of a mechanical issue and then a driver quits and then all of a sudden your, you know, uh, your banknote doesn't stop. So all, you can't meet your banknote and then you go out of business because you build it too quickly. Um, the same side of things, you don't want to um, not build at all because uh, you just want to continue to grow. So um, it's always a fun little game you have to play. But mm-hmm. it's, uh, yeah, it's, an, it, it's, definitely, it's definitely an interesting one when you put that order in for two more trucks. Um, because you get, you get, you need two more drivers and you need, you know, that much more permitting and everything else. But, um, it's, uh, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a fun side of things. So we just recently, um, posted about the top questions you should ask your food truck builder. Do you have any tips or any questions of your own that have helped you guys along the way? Uh, top questions to ask your food truck builder. Mm-hmm. Um, man, that's a good question. We, we knew what we wanted. <laughs> so, um, top question, top tips or questions for your food truck builder. Um, you, you know, seeing the qual, seeing the actual, I would say you have to see the facility. You have to see what they're doing. You know, because a lot of these companies they'll they'll use uh, subpar equipment or subpar. And we visited, I don't know how many builders we visited four, and. Kansas City isn't exactly close to Dallas, but mm-hmm. but for us it was it was by far the best the best builder because we looked at it and go they're using great equipment they they respond back um, uh, quickly uh, builder in terms of builders like you want people that do that that don't shy away from your phone calls and you you hear horror stories of you know the truck gets off the lot and now it's your truck and then you can never hear from that guy again whoever mm-hmm. sold it to you and that's I would say. Go and visit and start that relationship face to face. That's a that's a huge, huge difference. And I mean, I mean, you guys do great. I mean, they do a great job doing that. And um, whenever we need to get a hold of you, we obviously are able to and um, to solve problems that, that that arise. So yeah, that's I guess that's my only big tip is um, don't judge a book by its cover. You want to know what's underneath. You want to know what they're using. You know, you want to know mm-hmm. what type of ranges and how they're putting it in and who's actually working on the truck. And if you know that, then, you know, um, you can start to uh, see the differences in terms of who's a good builder and who's a bad builder. Um, the, the other huge tip is, um, um, I, I would say, don't be afraid to spend more money up front because if you don't get the quality, like if you go on a chassis that's 150,000 mile chassis, right? You know, and if you don't go for like, let's say, hey, hey I want a brand new chassis on your way to your first, you know, um, event that's, you know, for 5,000 people you're going to serve, your truck's going to break down and then all of a sudden all heck breaks loose. You know, so spending the money up front and getting a brand new chassis, I'd say that's, that's the one thing where that's that's a huge difference between people who make it and people who don't because if you're constantly off the road you're not making money and if you're not making money then why are you doing this so yeah that's uh, great advice yeah that's what i would that's yeah that's pretty much all i got after eight years okay that's great <laughs> and can you yeah. tell everybody where we can find you at online social media yeah it's uh, oh texas ice cream mm-hmm. texas ice cream.com um if you're uh, lazy you can do tx ice cream.com uh we're on facebook uh you know, TexasIceCream.com or Texas Ice Cream. Uh, we again, keeping it simple, stupid. Um, I can't tell you how how much of a difference that makes. Um, you get in people's brains. It just it just makes it a ton easier. So, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much thank for you. letting us pick your brain. Of course. Yeah. Thanks.